right, uh, if you're watching, I turned off Twitch integration. That'll be good news for the people on YouTube, probably. Um, because en enough people donated to the totem that it uh, broke the game. And uh, it took me like 15 minutes just to be able to move around in my colony. Because over the last six days, I've had several, I don't know, million channel points donated. It's it, I don't really feel comfortable being like... Uh, sad about that but at the same time i would like to play the game at some point as well twitch integration just in general has still got some still got some sticking points i guess so i'm trying to remember where the hell we even were people want to talk to me we had an expedition we got a lot of stuff going on here okay andy f the days are dragging perform the enlightenment ritual sure i can do that Please tell me you didn't die. I have returned from my successful missionary bearing gifts. I managed to find a bunch of meat. That's great. Um, level three? Go ahead, Josh. Why don't you go out? Go ahead and give me some meat. I trust you. Give me some devotion. I got a lot of time for the follower, or for the enlightenment quest. So I think I'm just going to go out on a on a crusade because I want to get some progress. Let's cook some splendid vegetable feasts, man. This is crazy. Some hearty meat broths. Look at how much money we have now. This is incredible. I will say, if you're enjoying Cult of the Lamb, I do appreciate that. I think we're getting close to the end of the game. Close to winding it down. We just have to not die on a dungeon run. Which, excuse me, what's the problem here? We have a heretic. We have a dissenter. Big Willy 249. Go ahead, go to the prison. And uh, get re educated. Okay. Owned? Get trunked. Some people leveled up here. Oh, no, no, they just created resources for me. That's fine. That's fine. Take some of that. Take some of that. Okay. Everyone's everyone's happy. Might get a little sick while we're gone. That's okay. Then we need to go on the fourth dungeon, which is here. Wait, if I could eat a meal, I would get a spirit heart. Are there meals available? Guess what? There is now. How about that? Once you beat the fourth dungeon, you're like 30 minutes out from the end of the game. Okay, I don't want to make it seem like I'm just trying to beat the game as fast as possible because I am enjoying myself. I'm just at the same time, I can't keep going through this rigmarole where every day I'm like, am I going to play Cult of the Lamb today? I got so much stuff to do in the cult. I got to go, you know, clean up all the poop. I got to say every time I play the game, people yell at me to make decorations. Okay, I don't like a zealous dagger, but that's okay. Please, please play, um... Play more knuckle bones, play more knuckle bones. Nah, man, I'm not playing more knuckle bones. That's a horrible start. I'm going, I'm going for broke, okay? I'm dying immediately. But I still like the game. I do think it's fair to say that it possibly makes a better first impression than lasting impression. Some games are different. Can I tell you, like, full health? Uh, can I tell you the, the prototypical example of a game that makes merely a decent first impression but has an awesome lasting impression? Stop me if you've heard this one before. Slay the Spire. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Uh, Into the Breach. Both of those games, first time you see them, you're like, oh, I get it. But is there, like, anything else going on? 400 hours later, you're like, what's better, strike or defend? I don't know. What's better, strike or defend? I forgot about this guy. Into the Breach is insane. The gamers put out a hit on Into the Breach. Only true gamers understand how good that game is. Get killed. Okay, that was better. I'm thankful. Tarot cards? No tarot cards. Okay, tarot cards? No tarot cards? <clears throat> what do you do? 
You just I need a weapon that interrupts, man. Cause I'm I get onto these like banter holes and all I do is left click. For example. You gotta you gotta go. You I don't care if you get healed. You You what the hell you hit me? You piece of junk? Oh my god, get owned. Okay, I should I should kill the healer. I should kill the healer first. You're being a real piece of junk right now. Still a piece of junk. There we go. Don't worry. Tarot cards coming up. We get our diseased heart back. We start to build up some synergies. Oh, uh, you gotta go? You gotta go? I don't have any fervor! Alright. This is gonna be a bad room for us. Uh oh. <laughs> This is gonna be like a really bad room for us. I, I can't talk for a second, I'm sorry. I got some stuff on the go here. I'm gonna need some fervor, too sweet. Okay, okay. I'm gonna need to not be dead, too sweet. Three minutes and ten seconds. So, all right. Okay, they're going to lose a little support. We'll go back and do a quick ritual. Dang old silverfish. Dagger's a horrible weapon. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I'm not saying you can't win with it, but, like... Uh, it, it, a weapon that makes your, um... That makes your tech tree move up faster, which makes cult life easier, even though it's already easy. I don't know, man. I don't know. We don't really need food to grow faster. No, I'm not gonna do. You you listen to what I say over the past 15 minutes, and you're like, unlock some decorations. Come on. Plus, don't eat. My wife made an incredible cult, okay? You know what her reward was for putting down floors and decorations everywhere? It broke all the textures in the game for like two weeks. Okay, hold on. Let's collect some food. They're still broken? Okay, well then, you know, it's broken them for three weeks then. They stay broken. Okay, we'll, we'll enlighten real quick. It's a ritual, right? Enlightenment? In, in, oh, that's a devotion one. Okay. Are we still on the third boss? Excuse me, what do you mean still? We beat the third boss the first time we fought them. You must be thinking of another gamer, probably somebody who's playing them on, a, uh, on the normal difficulty level. Sherman me. Yeah, like a damage buff, maybe, or like, um, start each dungeon with one more heart or something, or... Just anything along these lines. It feels like it would help me out a lot. A little bit of money, okay. Apparently I do need 20 followers as well. Speak to me, Andy. Um... Speak to me, Andy. Andy? Andy, speak to me. Don't speak to the prisoner, Andy. Speak to me. Almost done. Do we have anybody to be incepted into the colony? No, we don't. Okay, let's, let's cook some food and run it back. Ten cheery cauliflower casseroles and a few hearty meat broths. Eating a meal gives me one spirit heart, yeah. Unfortunately, it doesn't apply to burnt food, and I'm a, I'm a little impatient. I'm a rush-pilled... Uh, I'm trying to think of another word that we could add sell to the end that would make any sense here. Let me let me just I'm gonna eat one of these real quick. Can I just, just have one of these? More pumpkins, please. I'm a rush pilled cult cell. Trying to find the wizard to unslap my balls. Okay. 
There we go. Just me or this game have a lot of little bugs. It's got a few little bugs. Um, spiders, mostly. Okay, why don't you get purchased and then go back to my cult? And then as soon as you get back there, any chance you could... Uh, you could go clean up some poop? The wizard is my homie, though. True, true. Necromantic sword. Allegedly summon ghosts. I'll believe it when I see it. And then a little invincibility. Now don't... Everybody blames the last HP you lost for losing you the run. But all HP you lose carries the same weight and heft, okay? So if you're having problems dying, try not playing like an idiot the whole time instead of just trying to like be better at the end. There you go. This isn't Magic the Gathering. HP that's not your HP, your last bit of HP does sometimes matter. Do get it twisted, you will ruin your life. This guy's not so bad. Like, the, the sword, I should say. Okay, tarot cards. Tarot cards? Gonna play in a big Magic the Gathering tournament on Saturday. Any advice? Any advice, like... Oh, rip mouth. I, honestly, him dying is very good for my colony. When you consider how many times he tried to get me to murder other people. I don't have any advice for being better at Magic the Gathering. That's for sure. Um... Advice for being at the tournament? I mean, I guess I would just say, here's my general convention advice to begin with. I've been to, I don't know, like 10 PAXs or something like that. You gotta figure out what kind of person you are. Are you, are you playing in like a GP main event and you want to day to it? If that's the case, then like, you know, don't take this advice. If you're just going to have fun, don't stress being on the show floor. 12 hours a day from, from open to close just to feel like you're getting your money's worth. You know, when, when you get hungry, leave the convention center and go get like a decent sit-down lunch. Enjoy yourself a little bit. Pace yourself. Like, I, I promise you, you'll, like if you're going to PAX especially, I, I understand it's a Magic the Gathering tournament, but if you're going to PAX, you're gonna get more out of having like a decent sit-down lunch than you are over waiting in line to play like Far Cry 7. Because you're gonna wait in line for two hours, play for, I don't even know, probably like nine or ten minutes at most. And then at the end of it, you're still gonna be hungry. That's my two cents. Also, wash your hands in the bathroom. Like, for real, though? Oh, a spider lantern. Don't use the ball pit. I want better chess. I mean, like, here's the thing. You're probably gonna get sick anyway. Just because you're gonna be around a lot of people. But, like, you should wash your hands anyway. Even if it gives you, like, a 25% chance to not get sick or to get less sick, that's worth the, you know, 15 seconds of happy birthday to you two times, you know? I know it's supposed to be 30 seconds, but I'm, like, a, I'm a pretty fast singer, so... One wood. Okay. Not so bad. Grass? Grass me? I just got through food poisoning. How do I reconcile my relationship with food? It's gonna happen anyway, because the thing is, you gotta eat, right? Hold on. Jolti. Oh, darkness, oh, suffering. What say you, lamb? Do you embrace the cruelties of the world? I don't know. Life is beautiful or whatever. To see grace in a land such as this, I cannot be around such delirium. All right, sorry. Um, he's really mad. 
Like, you're gonna eat anyway. So at some point, you're gonna just reconcile it naturally. But after I had food poisoning, there was like two weeks where I was like, my sense of taste and smell are like different. Not gone, but it was like my, my body was craving foods that were not normal. And it was, it was hitting me with like the meh on foods that I thought were amazing. I'm not a huge Gatorade guy. I mean, this is partly because I was dehydrated, but, but like my body was like, I need Gatorade fucking now, man. It, I, I could have probably drank like three liters of Gatorade a day. Now, just, I mean, the thought of Gatorade makes me want to throw up. <laughs> I don't know if any other food got, got ruined for me, but certainly I, uh, I think I'm going to go a couple of years without drinking Gatorade, by choice at least. I'm mad, I'm mad. I'm mad at myself mostly though. Telescope. You know what? At least you give me a diseased heart. And a tree stump lamb statue! Let's go this way. Please don't call yourself a thirsty little S-word for Gatorade. I mean, actually, you know what? You do you. We got bigger problems in the world. I do... It, it's one of the things that kind of boggles my mind at the grocery store. It feels like, especially in the US, it's like one in four people leaving Target is leaving with a case of Gatorade. You aren't all ultra marathon sprinters. What's happening there? Like, I, I didn't know that Gatorade was cons... I know it was consumed, but I didn't know it was consumed with that kind of quantity or regularity outside of, like, college sports programs. Or, like, people who are habitual binge drinkers who haven't discovered, discovered Pedialyte yet. Like, I've, I've definitely had, like, especially when I was running, there would be runs where, like, I would get off, because I used to... Here's how crazy I am. And then, then we're going into a nested bit, okay? But I used to run on a treadmill. I would take a bus. This is, like, eight years ago. I would take a bus to the gym and go on, like, a 60 to 90 minute jog on a treadmill. Then I started talking to people, and they're like, you live in Vancouver. It's the best city in the world for running outside. You could run on the beach, you could run uh, in the city, you could run, you know, there's so many nice neighborhoods, go for it, okay? I said, you know what, you're right. Let me cancel my gym membership, I'm gonna start running uh, just outside. Second run outside, tore my meniscus. Then, and I'm, I'm still friends with this person, I have nothing against them, it's just a funny story that I'm gonna tell in an angry voice. Like a year later, the person who was telling me that, I was like, hey, by the way, thanks for the advice. I ran outside in Vancouver and tore my meniscus. And then he said, oh, actually, I stopped running outside because I got injured too. And I said, what happened? And he said he tore his meniscus. Thanks a lot. Great advice. Possibly the worst advice I've ever received in my entire life. Anyway, so sometimes when I ran and I got off the bus, I would go into the, like my body would just be like, I need Gatorade, I need Gatorade. So then I would get some Gatorade, you know? Hold on, do I have enough money for this? I do. And that Gatorade feels so damn good when your body's craving it. I will deal poison damage. Go bike outside? Honestly, biking inside is is goaded. Biking outside is great too. You get the wind in your hair, I'm assuming, if you got it. You're actually traveling to a place. But like, I don't want to deal with um, cars. Honestly, that's the big one. Like, if I'm biking for exercise, I don't want to have to worry about stopping at stop signs. I don't have to worry about... Oh. Uh, hello? <laughs> I think I've accidentally clicked off the screen. And almost turned off my OBS. My mouse came off the screen and clicked on like close OBS. Okay, well, we're still alive. 
That was weird. So like inside is is great. Plus, I don't have I I can just get on the bike, right? I don't have to worry about anything. Hold on, I gotta focus on this guy. We can kill this guy. We can win. What do you do? You create blight on the ground. Stopping at stop signs is a nice break. Yeah, but you know what's nice for exercise is not having to stop where the stop sign says and instead taking a break when you're actually tired. I'm not rallying against biking outside. I've done a lot of biking in Vancouver. I'm just saying when people are like, why use your Peloton? You should go outside. I'm like, well, they both have pluses and minuses. There's pros and cons, yeah. On the other hand, I do feel like when you're a cyclist that drives outside, you do get an insane amount of street cred. And also, you win every argument. Because if you ever do something, like, unsafe on your bike, you get to just say something insane. Like, oh, sorry I ran through that stop sign. I'm just trying not to get hit by a 2,000-pound aluminum missile. Oh, sorry, did I not follow the rules of the road? Oh, sorry, am I not supposed to have eight pints of fat tug and then get on my bike? I'm just trying to um, reduce my carbon footprint and not have the same amount of emissions as your Jeep Liberty uh, death machine. I, I do feel the need to say, I'm, I'm pro-cycling and I'm pro-cyclist. Don't, don't. Get, get away from me. But I do see that sometimes. Like when Steve was talking about sometimes it's annoying in uh, LA. You see the cyclists in like full Lance Armstrong USPS gear blowing through stop signs. Uh, and not only like, you know, making it harder to drive, but also making it less safe for the pedestrians that are trying to, you know, cross. And someone in chat literally used the, oh, I'm just trying not to get hit by a 2,000 pound aluminum missile comment. I was like, well, then maybe you should follow the rules of the road, buddy. I'm not, I have no personal uh, problem with you. I'm just saying, you know, like if you're biking outside, outside is not Strava, you know, like outside is, outs people are just trying to get to the damn grocery store without getting uh, run over by any vehicle, whether it's an electric scooter, a bicycle or a car. By the way, we actually succeeded here. No, I'm not back to flipping people off again yet. In fact, and I swear to you, this is a true story. It's also a little crazy. I'm realizing I drive for, I don't know, roughly 15 to 20 minutes a day, and I get a new driving story every day. Just a little slice of Vancouver life for you. Um, I came up to a four-way stop that I always come up to yesterday when I was picking my child up from daycare. I was clearly going to be the first person there. But I just looked to my left and I saw uh, an SUV barreling down and I was like, I just got the vibe. They're not going to stop at the stop sign. So I'm going to stop and let them go. And they didn't even touch their brakes. They, they just accelerated straight through the intersection. And I was like, you know what? I was proud of myself because I, I was like, I could have made that a problem, but that would have just made it both of our lives harder and potentially even more dangerous. Instead, I was just like, you know what? I recognize a problem is coming. I'm going to remove myself from the situation, and then I'm going to proceed on my way without my blood pressure going up. Do you remember their plates? Yes. I'm not going to say it, but I have been repeating it in my head. <laughs> just in case. Just in case I ever get a job as a police officer. Again, it's not, I want to be clear, it's not to punish the people who are bad drivers. It would simply be to look up their license plate, cross-reference it with, uh, like, their identity, and then see if they fucked their life up and they had, like, felonies or something like that, and then be like, I knew it, I knew they were bad at driving, which meant they were bad at everything. I wouldn't actually engage in any punitive behavior. Okay, a lot of people kind of sick, huh? Oh, okay, alright, hold on. Sanest, sanest streamer. Hold on, we need to build a couple of body pits here. A couple of gravel pits. 
Let me just uh, wrap you up here. Where's Mouth, by the way? Did, did he have the audacity to, buy, to die behind the totem? He did. How am I supposed to see that, Mouth? One last selfish act, I see. Drop you right in there. By the way, Prezo, I see you in chat. I had to ask Chib last night. I didn't know you actually, like, hurt your face. When you posted the, the the first tweet with the with your facial injuries, I honestly thought it was like a Snapchat filter or something like that. And I was like, "That's funny." I'm not going to repeat the text of the, <laughs> of the tweet, but I did. I laugh. I laughed. Yes. Then I saw you streaming yesterday, and I was like, "Oh, he's like actually, he's he's broken part of his face." I came across that tweet in the wild. Some people just have the Twitter sauce, man. I don't have the Twitter sauce. Like, if I if I get a tweet with 2,000 likes, I'm like, that's incredible. That's like as many likes as an Among Us streamer gets for like tweeting good morning. It's a little sad. I don't, for, what, for whatever reason, I can't seem to crack Twitter, but that's probably for the best. Hey, who's, oh, only one person's sick. We've got one dissenter. I would like you to make, um, you make coins. Yeah, just make some coins for me. And how much you got? We got 14 and 10. Why don't you make five of these, two of these in coins? Sounds great to me. Psyching Subway was great. I appreciate that. Um, recruit a dissenting follower? Sure, I'll, I'll do it. I need followers, man. By the way, in case you don't remember, Twitch integration is off. I apologize, but it's the way it has to be right now. This story is also true. And I know I, it, nothing could sound more suspicious than prefacing a bunch of stories with this is 100% true. It just, it's, it's a bit of a crazy city, you know? There's a, there's a lot of characters out there. I went to Subway on Sunday uh, to get some lunch. Judge me if you must. Guy said, everything on your sandwich? And I said... I didn't say no, because that would be a little rude. Instead, I said, lettuce, tomato, red onion, cucumber, pickles, and olives. And then he said, so everything? And I didn't know what to say. So I just said, uh, well, I don't want any spinach. And then he said, oh, okay, everything but spinach. And I said, yeah, I laughed and said, haha, I guess. But I'm like, that's not true. I didn't get the smashed avocado. I didn't get hot peppers. And I, there's like, I didn't get spinach. That's not everything. It's like everything but four things. You want me to... So is that how you want your orders to come in a Subway from now on? You want me to say everything? Yeah, everything but these four things. That's not... I only named like six things. Wouldn't you rather just have six things that you're getting than four things that you're not and then you have to do like an inverted matrix in your head? I'm just... I'm like, dude, you... And I, I hate to say this, but it's true. He was not a Subway worker. He's like the Subway franchisee because I've, I've seen him there for years. And I've seen how he talks to the other employees. But I'm like, bro, you own a Subway. Like, you shouldn't be in the business of alienating anybody. Your company's all fucked up. Nobody eats here but me. Like, you should, you, like, I'm not saying, oh, the customer's always right, but I'm just, why are you, why are you coming at me with an attitude? I'm probably like the only motherfucker dumb enough to eat here like two times a week. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> sorry, it just it was on my mind. It's everything? Well, I didn't get the spinach. Oh, everything but the, everything but the jalapenos? Okay. Just a little rude. Anyway, it was just this on my mind. Would love your thoughts on this. What's the problem right now? There's no problem. People are just a little a little peckish. It's no problem. I'm no, I'm not gonna leave them a one-star review on Google. Everyone else that eats there can leave them a one-star review on Google because that's what they deserve. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'll recruit you real quick, okay? 
I don't know what any of this shit is. Nobody knows what you are. Get some passives. Get a little passive. Can I get a passive? Just get a little passive. You got a passive? What is what is compost? Deposit grass? I don't have grass to spare. Let's get a devotion harvest totem. Sure. Get a fart totem? I don't know what that means, Scott. I'm leaving. I'm going on another crusade. You can, uh, if you want to have the same argument we've had a thousand times, then then do feel free to argue about whether spinach is better than iceberg lettuce. I honestly don't care. <laughs> just, we've we've gone through this so many so many roads, so many roads a man has walked down before you can call him a man. You know my thoughts on spinach. I don't know if it's like a genetic thing or what. When I eat raw spinach, and I, I still do eat it sometimes, my teeth feel weird and like kind of metallic. It's a little strange, okay? So sometimes I prefer like an iceberg lettuce. You do me a favor, I don't know. Just go, just go worship or something. You're a dissenter, right? Uh, you'll follow my teachings faithfully. So it turns out that was a damn lie. No, no, no it's the next guy. No, I thought you were the dissenter. I don't know. Okay, hold on. You're the dissenter. I might wait a day just to get this guy out of prison. You got beds. We might build one more bed, though. Just put a bed right there. Sure. In your opinion, do you antagonize chat? What's going on on Dan's streams lately? He's getting he's he's been going into some avant-garde territory to put it in his own parlance. Okay, hold on. We're gonna get you out of prison. Thank you for the raid, by the way. Um We're gonna get Big Willy out of his stocks. You are going to be released from jail. Her murmur. Okay. I'm going to... You know what? Welcome to the stream, Daniel. We'll have Dan Giesling here. I said he antagonizes Melvin's, not all of chat. Dan, I promise I'm not doing this just as a joke. But, like, you're the dude I just named after you, he doesn't like me right now, so I have to put him in prison until he learns the error of his ways, okay? It's only going to take two days. Look at, he's got the, the the swirly eyes, man. I can't have this guy infecting my colony with bad ideas. We're gonna need some damn food soon, though. That's for, that's for darn sure. I said he antagonizes the Melvins, not everybody in chat. I honestly, of course I would have the most flattering view of myself, but I actually like agree with that 100%. I mean, I feel like on the internet, people have gotten very uncomfortable being very passive aggressive and sarcastic to strangers in comments, even for things that they like enjoy. There's no like, uh, there's very little genuine appreciation. It's always like um, sarcastic, like little brother type snipes and stuff like that. And I feel like there's not a lot of people who respond to that with the same level of passive-aggressive snark uh, that they were met with in the first place. They're not used to it. So as a result, they think that that's antagonistic towards them. When what it actually is, is just, it's literally the golden rule. It's, it's treating other people the way they treated you. And I'm, like, content with it. If you, uh... If you want to come here and be sarcastic, I'm happy to be sarcastic to you. It's, I mean, I don't know about other people. I'm a 90s kid. I'm kind of like, uh, I mean, that's the, I'm fluent in sarcasm and I've got several t-shirts that say it. Let's have a, i just recruit you real quick. That's not the golden rule. That's my golden rule. Treat others the way they want to be treated? Well, here's the thing. It is the golden rule. Because if, if they were following the golden rule, they would treat me how they want to be treated. 
Which means that they wouldn't come in here and say, like, some rude shit. They would come in here and say, wow, this is the best stream I've ever seen. At which point I would say, thank you so much for your compliment. I hope you have a great day. Instead, they come in here and they obviously they must want to be treated the same way they're treating me. Otherwise, they're not following the golden rule. They don't even criticize your gameplay anymore. Instead, they just come in and say, a uh, thing that he said, green text arrow, thing that he did that is slightly at odds with thing that he said. And then you respond to that with like, well, sometimes the guiding principles that I used to play fall apart when you see the shops that you get in Super Auto Pets. As much as I'd like to buy a turtle, um, a turtle didn't show up in the shop, so instead I had to spend three gold on something else, and I just thought that an ant would be like the best option possible here. And then people just type, people talk, people talk, people talk. So instead, you just gotta own them. It's the only, it's the only way it works, man. It, that's, that's how the marketplace of ideas works in Twitch chat. I don't ignore good comments. It's just uncomfortable to respond to them sometimes. Like sometimes people post like, I love watching these streams with my cat. And I'm like, that's, it makes me feel good, but how am I supposed to, there's no meat on the bone. How am I supposed to respond to that? Meow? Just say meow, okay. Just push play, Aerosmith's best song. Wow, you did it. Truly, you are without flaw. Wait, what did I do? I had a quest? Quest complete? Okay, foods. We cook foods, we go on another mission. Oh, I, I took the dissenting follower. You're right, you're right. Meow. Bowl of poop. Dan, you hungry? <laughs> sorry, sorry. We're low on food, man. People are going to be very hungry by the time we get back. Hold on, we have a little bit more. Maybe time for one meal. Three pumpkins and a pumpkin seed. Don't mind if I do. I do have to say, whoever said... Um, bro, really? Whoever said make um, graves, you'll get an insane amount of devotion. Thank you so much for the intel on that one. It's actually like helped out the... What would you do? Would you save here? Yes, I would save here. They're gonna spawn me in the middle. Okay. Save it up, main menu. Accept. What happened? I cleaned up some vomit and then the vomit um, was cleaned up I mean, a, a cultist was cleaning the vomit before I started cleaning it, okay? I went to help, but then the vomit disappeared, and I'm sure that the trigger to end the animation is, and give you control of your character again is when the vomit is gone, but the vomit was not there in the first place. So I think the only other possible outcome for us there would have been to stand still until somebody else throws up in that spot, and then we could have cleaned it. But I'm not willing to wait for that. Thank God we're not on Iron Man. Hold on, you should be making some damn coins, some damn coins. By the way, Dan, I don't even, are you still here? Well, I know this isn't casino rich content. So you might be on your way to the, to the Aiden Ross streams. What are you playing right now anyway? Are you still on Cuphead? Are you playing Bayonetta? Cuphead DLC, okay. That's cool, I like watching the Cuphead. Excuse me, I need to eat this. I, I want to eat a meal. I want to eat. I'll, I'll eat the pumpkin soup. I don't care. I'll eat the pumpkin. I, I can't eat anything. I already ate. Okay, never mind. I'm out of here. Because I know you played a little Cult of the Lamb. And I know, I believe you said 2022's Isaac, and then you never played it again. And then today you played Isaac. <laughs> War Maker's Hammer 13. He couldn't put his own spin on it. Honestly, I think that's actually fair. I understand that. And then Curse the Golf. I know Dan said it's it's too much text and too much tutorials. I'm like Again, I with with as with a lot of respect, with more respect than you think I'm meaning to give it, I actually think it's a really good game. I just think 
that the holes are so freaking long, man. Like, I, I, I don't know how long it would take me to beat a run in that game. Someone in chat said they beat a run. It took them five and a half hours. That's, that's long. It's a very long time. Get smashed. Oh, hello. Have you thought of what awaits you when your task is completed? The lamb is after all the sacrificial beast. If I cannot stop you, I can at least prepare you for the suffering to come. I've seen this before! What are you doing to my cult? Leader, I'm sorry, ah. What's... Uh, you're gonna make me kill two of my followers? I already... Already did this. You're gonna make me kill two... I can't leave. Whatever. We'll get new ones. They bite our flows, so we make new ones. If you're really dope, how, ain't, how come you ain't signed yet? You know what I'm talking about? Mighty Souls of Mischief? So true, so true. This is how we chill from 93 till. Many people are saying this. Twitch chat, you know they're chilling. That ravaged the faith. It's okay, we'll just we'll tell them a fucking lie when we go back. We'll give them some midnight mass, they'll be good to go. Now that's a show, man. Midnight mass. Rare Netflix dub in the 2020s. More like midnight ass. Look, I'm gonna plus to you, but that's kind of fucked up. That's a great show. It's actually an incredible show. Especially if you like two people having a conversation by just monologuing at each other for like five minutes at a time. And then you're like, what the hell? The episode's over. It was 82 minutes long. It was just two people on a couch talking. And I loved it. Super rare, five second cooldown. That's a gimme. It is a great show. The, di the dialogue is, I'm not being a hater. Go back to the midnight mess arc. I said, whoa, this show's amazing. And then there's that one dude. I was always like, man, what's his name? It's Hamish something. Hamish McGovern, what's his name? This is Shroomy? Hmm, that's right, you crown bearers are all the same. He lived, he stayed true to who he was. You'll never live up to him. Get out of my way, I've got knuckle bones to play. Literally just met you. Hamish Linkletter, that's it. Hamish Linkletter sounds like the name of somebody who would be in Kingsman, but is not in Kingsman. bones. I need followers, man. What the hell is this? Turn money to meat? What is this? A restaurant? Shamura, we make this offering. Okay, offer this. Offer this? <laughs> oh, you idiots. Oh, you're so dead. Holy cow, you see that? Ooh! If I could get Bane on my weapon... I would be very into that. Just literally just step over here. Do come over by me. Sorry, I shot a projectile at you. That wasn't my intention. Anybody else want their ass beat? Don't say me, by the way. Can I tell you something insane, by the way? I, um... So I, I've started using... I don't have, like, a wearable fitness device. I don't have a Fitbit or an Apple Watch or a, a Samsung Watch or anything like that. I will also say, and this is just me being honest with you, my wife has an Apple Watch. I call it an iWatch accidentally. At least... I would say 60% of the time that I refer to it. I say, where's your iWatch? Like, I'm, I'm actually that guy. I'm 100 years old. I'm, I'm calling the PlayStation and Nintendo. 
I'm changing my name from Casey to Karen. I'm trading my MG for a white Chrysler LeBaron. What a song. Anyway, um, but I still, I started using my, um, I wish to go this way. I wish to go this way. I, I started uh, using my phone's built-in fitness app. What do you think it's spat out for here's how many steps you should take a day? Ten thousand? Okay, it did not spit out ten thousand. It spat out six thousand. And even that, I'm like, look, according to Pokemon Go, I took fifty something thousand steps last week, okay? Six thousand a day average is not so bad. But like on Monday to Friday, come on. How you how are you getting six thousand on a Monday to Friday? Forty minutes, uh, forty to sixty minutes of walking a day? Work in a warehouse? Okay, I honestly, I feel like your step limit should probably be considered a little higher then. Don't have a desk job? Okay. That notwithstanding, because, like, that's not going to happen. Hey, what, what made you decide to go work at the Amazon Fulfillment Center? Oh, I was just trying to get my steps in. Live in a walkable city? I mean, I live in a walkable city. I'm just like, Monday to Friday, how do you find the time to get a 60-minute walk-in? I'm taking, like, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm out, like, four or five hours. That's no problem. But, like, Monday to Friday, I think it should be a weekly step goal. That's what I'm saying. Plus, and the other thing is, I didn't realize that as soon as I um, started using this app, it was going to start insulting me every day. I woke up, went to the bathroom, looked at my phone, and I had a push notification that said, you have 15 of 6,000 steps today. I just woke up. Can you just chill out for a damn second? You suck. Can I even play you again? I've just got enough. We're making it back. Do get it twisted. You will save your life. I think we lost money overall. I think we might have lost a lot, actually, but... Get it twisted. Can I break your ass? I might just break your frickin' branch tonight. Anyway. The other thing is, I, not only am I being insulted by the step counter, and it's giving me a goal that's going to be very difficult to reach Monday through Friday, that we'll make up for it Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, I finished my Peloton ride today, and uh, my Peloton said 450 calories burned. I was like, I was sweaty. That seemed about right. I popped it into my Samsung app. It said 280 calories burned. And then I said, excuse me, um, I'd like to edit the amount of calories burned. I find that's one of the easiest ways to burn more calories is to just edit the amount of calories that your workout said that you did. And it said no. 30 minutes of, of stationary biking, that's 287 calories. And I was like, what the hell? You don't burn 450 on a bike in 30 minutes? You haven't seen what I'm doing in these rides, okay? You haven't seen me out of the saddle. 65 cadence, 70 resistance while Gravel Pit by the Wu-Tang Clan is on, all right? You haven't seen it. If you haven't, if you haven't taken the Wu-Tang ride, you don't know, man. Or when Alanis is pumping, you think I'm not getting my heart rate up when, when Head Over Feet is on? This guy's a little freak. Nice try. Okay, phase two. Definite phase two incoming. Ooh, nice try. Are you even a boss or are you just like a guy? 
Like, you're very aggressive, and I'm like, ooh, I'm very scared of you or whatever, but like... Does he do anything? You almost got a hit in. I would have been so embarrassed. He's literally just a guy. What was your output? Okay, but you can't judge me, okay? Here's the thing. It didn't have a lot of out of the saddle climbs. It was a lot of like flat road, steady state, low aerobic exercise. So my output was a little bit lower today, okay? I think, I think it was like 330. 330 kilojoules, 330 watts, three, whatever one, I can't remember, it's kilojoules, 330 kilojoules. Can somebody run the calorie calculation? I'm about 80 kilograms, 330 kilojoules divided by 80 kilograms. That to, I think that might be 5,000 calories. That's sick. I mean, that's a long bike ride. That's a lot of exercise to only lose like a pound and a half. <laughs> I don't know. That seems too slow. Good looking out, Toasty. That was, that was a strong, uh, strong thing to add to the... Um, Disallowed terms list, appreciate it. You should try a chest heart rate monitor. Yeah, but then I gotta put like it on. Like Kate got me one. Then I'm like, I gotta put it on and then I gotta like, I get a little sweaty with it and I got it strapped to my chest the whole time. Can't they just like make a guess? I accept you. I might get a smartwatch. I go on a lot of walks. It seems like anything that makes those walks entertaining is is a you know would be a, a higher quality of life improvement for me. Also, it seems like one of those devices that like nobody's ever like, oh, I got one and it sucks. It seems like most people that have like a Deadly dish. Most people that have like a smartwatch are like, yeah, it's pretty cool. I would re-up. I just cooked some follower meat. It's okay. Before you eat, before you eat, everybody, before you eat. We're gonna do a quick sermon. <laughs> and then we're gonna do a, th a three day fast. <laughs> wow, let's do a ritual real quick. I just wanna up our faith, man. Can we do a quick, do a little dance? No, I can't afford to kill followers. Apparently, to get to the final boss, I have to get, uh, I have to have 20 followers. I can't afford to be killing anybody. It's true. See, many people are saying this. You know what I'm gonna do real quick? I'm gonna give you some alms. Give you some alms. <laughs> Me doing yoga. Holy cow, they love me. Okay, a lot, a lot of negative faith is coming out here, but that's okay. Anybody pogging? Oh, here it comes. Here comes another one. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. You wouldn't have had to eat followers. Hold on, my wife leveled up again. You wouldn't have had to eat followers if my farm workers worked a little bit fucking faster. Like, they're so ass. Go take a sleep, like... 
Yo, Josh made it back. Time to die. I've returned. He found some meat. Dang, Josh, you kept the whole colony alive. Great work. Okay, Big Willy. Why don't you go out on a mission to get some meat? I know you're going to come back pretty hungry. That's okay. Oh, wait. I've got, I've got divine inspiration. I'm not even building any of this stuff, man. I'm not even building any of it. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Outhouse 2 holds more shit. Okay, Bodacious Bandit, just while you're here, I'm gonna just inspire you real quick. It's just something I'm good at, just something I do. And then I would love to build a Harvest Totem too. Increases the growth speed of farm plots in its range. Like, that seems like a gimme. And then I need to build more stone mines. Or one more stone mine, at least. Just build that thing, like, right freaking here. And then I should build an upgraded outhouse as well. I couldn't agree more. Outhouse 2, the shittening. Okay, look, I'm gonna give you a- I'm gonna give you a tentative plus 2 for that. Not an insane plus two, but the idea, because here's the thing, I'm doing a little bit of the lifting in my own head. What if the movie wasn't called The Shining? What if it was called The Shitting? And it was just two hours of Jack Nicholson on the toilet. I'm trying to shit. <laughs> Jack, Jack, what are you doing in there? You wouldn't get it, sweetheart. I'm trying to push shit out of my ass! It's not even a good impression in the slightest. Here's Poopy! NL, do you antagonize chat? I'm gonna have to hit that with a no. Don't worry, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna squeeze my core until a little bit of shit comes out of my ass. It's more like the angry video game nerd, I suppose, than, than anything else. You got some resources for me? Oh yeah, you do. Look at that. Now, I do want to, again, this is too much information. I've been eating a lot of bread lately. I recently said that um, one of the cheapest ways that you can treat yourself if you enjoy bread is to just start buying like good bread. Good loaf of bread's what, five, six bucks? You get a, a dozen slices out of it. it. It elevates your toast, it elevates your sandwich. You could just spread butter on it. You could warm it up a little bit in the oven and then spread some butter on it. It's delicious. It's a great way to treat yourself in my personal opinion. I've been eating a lot of bread lately. I gotta tell you, maybe I'm also thinking that maybe it's partly because of the colonoscopy. Maybe like maybe once a decade, you should actually go to the pharmacy and get the laxative that they give you to prepare for your colonoscopy. But like, I feel like my gastrointestinal health has not been better for a long time. I feel like it cleared out some stuff that had been there since college. And I'm like, I've never, I've never felt better, honestly. And the proof is in the pudding. Pun intended. I did a quick, a, a, a quick factory reset. You're absolutely right. Quick, uh, colonic factory reset. I un, uh, I bent a paperclip and, and hit the button in there and now I'm good to go again. I should purchase you as well. I need more. Well, oh, I thought I was... I thought I bought a bad one. <laughs> I thought I was corrupted. He's like, yeah, kill me, kill me, kill me. Okay, whatever.
I've also I've been workshopping a tweet in my head as as we've been discussing bread. Um, I've been workshopping a, a tweet in my head, and the tweet is something like watching a movie where somebody in a medieval prison just eats a hunk of bread and saying, "Fuck, that looks good." I can't. I can't quite get the words to line up. Okay, that's fine. I, okay, that's not good. I remember the combo, by the way. 100% reason to remember the name. Don't even try me, mister. I was thinking, I remember saying, like, a long, long time ago, maybe being in a medieval prison wouldn't be so bad. Because, like, honestly, like, bread and cheese, that's a sick diet, honestly. I mean, it might not be the healthiest diet in the world, but I, I would be spiritually satisfied. Then I looked it up, like, last night, and I was like, what was medieval prison food like? And then it was like, oh, literally, it's just like, they give you broth with rice in it, and sometimes the rice also had, like, rat and mouse droppings in it. And, I, and and there's, like, tons of disease outbreaks and stuff like that, and I'm like, you know what, maybe, maybe I'd rather just go to the grocery store. We got the tentacles of tuna. Okay. I'm going, I'm going off. You can see it for yourself. I got hit because I was going off too much. Dead. But then, like, honestly, then I saw some articles on what, like, prison food is like. Hello? Hello? Like, normally? Like, in, well, maybe not normally, but in, like, American prisons? And I was like, I don't know, it honestly seems like... Maybe it would be better back in the, <laughs> in the medieval era. <laughs> Okay, so I guess I'll head back to the base because there's an enemy on the screen, but I can't see him. The eggs take time to spawn. You made it through too quickly. Holy cow, do you see the devotion we generated, though? Look at that. not even enough. You're still pissed off, huh? Okay, get re-educated. Get released. Okay, Dan, welcome to the colony. I think we need another bed. Yes. Has Malf asked you to feed someone a shit burger lately? Malf passed away due to old age. Oh. <laughs> so I didn't mean to make you feel bad. Like, you know, I mean, he's, he's just a fake guy. There you go. I don't know. Dude, go chop some trees or something. What do I need to make a better outhouse? What the hell? Ten, ten crystals? Oh, hang on, I forgot the crystals. Can I just open this, by the way, now? No, okay, I, I still gotta wait. Alright, this time, no bugs. Vampiric axe, I love it. These are homing missiles. Sort of. Wow, how creative. Spiders again. I don't know why I'm being mad about it. I'm just, I'm just, it's just banter. It's only entertainment. Okay, remember, what, it, what got us through the last run? We had our heads screwed on straight right from the beginning. We said don't take damage unnecessarily early, which makes you try to, like, play faster to make up for it. Just just play smart from the beginning. 
Okay, that time you just, honestly, you just shot me really fast. I'm willing to admit you just got me there. Spiders in the spider dungeon? Real original. Oh, let me guess, this green goo is a, a poison, I presume? Do you guys own white jeans? I was... Uh, Squeaks' his tweet where he's standing um, inside of that blue circle and it says wet paint and he's wearing blue jeans. I thought it was funny when I said you ruined your white jeans. Because I, I don't know... At least I don't know any guys who own white jeans. But then I was thinking if I was a white jeans wearer, I would probably be a little offended by that tweet. So I guess what I'm saying is I apologize. I don't live in Miami. I, it's funny that like white shorts, which which I have several pairs of, are like completely acceptable. <laughs> but white jeans are like a little bit. I mean, it it doesn't mean you're an asshole to wear them at all. But it is when you wear them, you know that you're wearing white jeans. It's not like you. Oh, I just picked something out. You know. Spider torch. I had to go to a funeral where we wore all white. So, anybody else here live in a major city? There's an event in Vancouver, but it started... It, it's in a lot of cities now. It started in Paris. It's called Dinner en Blanc. And I fucking hate it. And you're about to give me so many plus twos. My head's going to explode and I'm going to live for it. Um, the, how does dinner en blanc work? Okay, so it's a it's a city everyone's invited kind of as long as you make it through the highly exclusive wait list. Um, it's a picnic where you bring your own chairs and tables, uh, thus clogging up public transit with a bunch of rich assholes who are forced to wear all white clothes. Um, because here's what they do: they go, uh, all right. Hey, everybody on the wait list. Psh, psh. Okay, we're not going to tell you where the venue is until like two hours before the venue. Psh, psh. By the way, wear your finest like white clothes. Psh, psh. Okay, now everyone get on the Sky Train and go clog up a public space with not, and the people are fine, but then you get on the Sky Train and then every person is carrying two chairs under their arm and then also a table and also a picnic basket and also, it, like, it's so annoying. Um, and then, the, what, what's the payoff? You get to eat a picnic for like 80 bucks in a public park where you brought your own furniture surrounded by other assholes like you. It's a great community outreach event because like 2% of the city goes on it to get great Instagram photos and it galvanizes them as being part of their own in-group and then the other 98% of the people just get to go like, I, you know, it was like a week and a half ago or something like that. I was walking and, uh, or I was driving, and I saw someone jaywalk and almost get hit by a car merging onto one of the major bridges in Vancouver, and when you know it, it was two people wearing white suits and, and carrying a picnic basket and two chairs and a table. And I was like, you know what? It, I, I said in my head, I bet it's dinner en blanc tonight. And then I went home and Googled it, and I said, I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. So I, no disrespect to any of you who, who love it, to any of you who look forward to it all year. Well, I mean, I said no disrespect, but what I said was disrespectful. Did I not draw a card from that guy? <laughs> I was, I was, was kind of going off, sorry. I don't know what would happen, though, if you just... Because it's, it's in a park, usually. I don't know if you could just show up to the park and be like... You know, be dressed in all blue. Ooh. Yeah, it was better than telescope at least. And then if they were mad, you would be like, yeah, but this is like, it's the park. No, I'm not, in I'm genuinely not interested in going to it. It just seems like, I'm, with, with all disrespect, it actually seems like the least cool people of all time would be there. They don't seem like my kind of people. Or maybe they're too cool for me. I don't know. I'm just gonna get some wood. It doesn't sound like a fun time to me. 
I'm not gonna protest it. I mean, I got other stuff to do. <laughs> They're not really hurting anybody. They're just inconveniencing people. One day a year. I'm gonna steal your devotion if that's cool with you. Wearing all white is a lifestyle. It's just such, like, it's a cool vibe to be around these people. They're all wearing white. They're all taking uh, two hours to eat the meal because they're staging it for Instagram. They're all, like, thinking that they're not better than other people. They're all thinking they're equal to other people as the normies who are not wearing all white walk around. And they're like, oh my god, look at them. They're so embarrassed that they're not here in Dinner en Blanc. Eating a $80 ham sandwich. What the hell are you? Death Sweep and Death Squall. Let me get Death Sweep, please. Hey, Anel, you ever have fun before? Hey, you ever realize there's lots of people on Earth who have different ideas of fun? I have fun doing lots of things. You know what? Playing this right now, a lot of people would say this is fun. I would agree with that one. Hold on, I gotta come back in here. A lot of people think it's fun to, like, go to a nightclub. I don't think that's fun at all. A lot of people would not think it's fun to hang out with Core Skeet at the Alligator Lounge Trivia Hour. I think that honestly sounds like a great time. I'm sorry, by the way. I hope you got your $80 worth. I envy you. Well, you may yet kill me. Still, I would not trade places. He waits at the point of a sharpened blade. Is this a riddle? You ever stop having fun? Honestly, one of the... I, I know that I'm not 100% normal. What's weird is that by being a little askew from mainstream society, I've also somehow garnered a reputation as the most normal streamer on this website. It's just, it's a, it's a weird world. But one of the things that's kind of annoying about not being 100% normal is you constantly have to like defend your real feelings. The way it always comes up, and it's a recycled bit, so I apologize, but the way it always comes up is when I say, like, I don't like dancing. And then people always say something like, dance like nobody's watching. And I'm like, no, I'm not embarrassed. I just don't get it. Like, I don't I don't understand how you're... just want to see my map briefly. just want to see my map. Have I already gotten a tarot card on this floor? I don't think so. I just don't understand, like, how you get fun from it. Like, when I'm doing it, I'm, I'm not like, oh, I'm dancing and having, like, a fun time. I'm just like, I'm moving my body, like, to the music but I'm not getting any enjoyment out of it. I'm not like, oh, I'm so in my head, people are gonna look at me dancing and be like, this guy doesn't know how to dance. I'm more like, why is this fun? Why, I don't understand why this is like the default activity at every event with a bunch of people, except I guess it's really cheap. It's like, you just, you really just need like a floor. As long as you got a floor, it's an easy way to entertain a bunch of people. And then, you know, same thing with something like skydiving. Or even like roller coasters. People are like, oh, I get it. Like, you're scared to go on a roller coaster? And you're like, yeah. Like, I mean, it's not that I think the roller coaster is going to crash. It's just that, like, especially when it's on the way up, I'm like, I'm just anxious because it's just an unpleasant feeling. People are like, no, you just got to, like, let go of that. And I'm like, yeah, or I could just, like, not go on the roller coaster. I don't know. There's this, like, one size fits all idea of fun. I like theme parks. This is the coaster itself. I'm a I got freaking stunned by a knockdown. Heal me, please. Don't. And then like the opposite. Sometimes people like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good example. But I'll just be like hanging out by myself. This happened more when I was a teenager. Or, no, you know what? Actually, th it, this happened more when I was a young adult. I would like uh, eat dinner by myself in a restaurant all the time. Or eat lunch by myself in a restaurant all the time. And just like, even before smartphones, just like, you know, read a book or a magazine or something like that. Occasionally, when you tell people about that, they would be like, oh, like that sucks. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm eating a delicious meal and like, 
I'm dead. I'm eating a delicious meal and like engaging in an activity that I also like. I've gone to the movies by myself before. Go to the zoo on my own? I've never done that. You're crazy, man. But you gotta like explain yourself. You gotta be like, well, actually, it's okay to go to the movies alone because when you're at the movies, you don't really talk to people anyway. No, you just say like, it was fun. I watched a movie by myself and enjoyed my own company. Who cares? You don't have to make like a case for it. I like doing things alone sometimes. What is go- oh, they're grieving. My followers also think I'm weak though. Like you don't always have to- if you have- to, if you always need someone else to do something, it's a recipe for disaster.